Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we'll start with the discussion of source degeneration. So mainly, I'll give a very intuitive analysis in this lecture, and we'll go deeper in the next in the next lecture. So first, a source degeneration refers to adding a resistor to the source terminal of a MOSFET. So there are two main reasons why we do that. So I'll briefly discuss what are those two reasons. So first, consider a conventional MOSFET. If you want a gain out of it, or you want, so how did we discuss? How do we generate gains? We first apply a voltage at the gate and generate a small current which is in proportion to the input voltage. Then push this current into a resistor, you get a gain. The gain is going to be Gm times Rl. Let Rl be the load resistance. It's going to be in this case it will be there will be a minus sign. It can be the sign doesn't matter. The gain is Gm into Rl. The problem with this gain is that this gain is prone to process variations. Resistor, this parameter RL depends upon a resistor and this GM depends upon a MOSFET. So these two are different devices. So they will have different variations. Okay. So GM will vary on its own independently and RL can also vary on its own independently. So the gain itself when you design it, it's going to vary with process and, or, and even temperatures. So the question is, can we somehow generate a constant gain? Okay, a constant gain. That's one question. The second question is, when you apply VI to a MOSFET, we know a MOSFET is inherently a nonlinear device. And only when, when we make an approximation that we usually ignore the square law terms, the second order terms and all that, and only consider the linear terms. So if I apply a larger voltage between gate and source, there we'll, we are going to get more and more nonlinear currents at the output I0 is going to contain more and more nonlinear terms because you know if the current is actually beta into beta n into vi square I mean vi minus vt square here vi is the input minus vth the whole square is the expression for the current so this will contain square terms and all that so as you increase the input voltage magnitude the output current this, the nonlinear terms in the output current will also increase so when you build amplifiers it has to have a constant gain preferably and also more linear see the whole idea of building amplifiers is to amplify and reproduce i mean uh, reproduce at the output an amplified version of the input you should not generate new terms new additional terms nonlinearity is going to add additional harmonics at the output right it's going to give you f not 2 f not 3 f not and so on it's going to produce more and more harmonics at the output so now uh, to analyze this source degeneration, what exactly does source degeneration do to this MOSFET? We will uh, we will take a block diagram approach. As I said, we will try not use KCLs and KVLs much. So first, I'll look. If you look at this device, MOS device, it has gate and source terminal. The difference between the two voltages times GM will be the output current. So I can treat this GM as a black box, the MOSFET as a black box, as though it's a transconductor, which is going to generate an output current I naught based on the difference between the gate and the source voltages. So I'll write gate minus the source voltage here will be the input to the MOSFET and you get a current GM. Now the instant I'm going to add RS to this. Now instead of source being at ground, I have added a resistance at there to the source terminal. Now what happens here is that of course an input voltage at the gate is going to generate some current, output current. But this output current is going to flow into the resistance RS and generate a voltage across this. This voltage in effect is going to reduce the effective input seen by the MOSFET, which is VGS. Okay, So there is some kind of a feedback. There is some kind of a feedback in the system. So we'll use the similar feedback approach of uh, drawing this, drawing the, uh, uh, try to draw a block diagram for this circuit with source degeneration. So this is your gate voltage. I'm going to represent the gate voltage as VI. And if you subtract the source voltage, which is VS here, which is what I've represented here, then this times GM will be your output current. This output current, when it flows through the resistor, so I'll have to multiply it with the source resistance RS, sorry, uh, the resistance RS, it's not the source resistance. We have added this resistance on purpose. This is the degenerating re resistance degenerating resistance and then when I, when this current flows through this I0 times RS is going to be Vs that is fed back. You can see it as a negative feedback system. Now for this negative feedback system as a, in the previous circuit we derived the expression I0 upon Vi which was your transconductance which was simply Gm. Now for this circuit with the source degeneration I0 upon Vi is going to be 
gm by 1 plus gm rs right it's the forward path gain divided by 1 plus a beta the loop gain is gm into rs it's a negative feedback system so you get a plus here so if you look at this expression the gm previously was just gm itself now the gm is actually reduced now if you look at this mass structure The voltage Vi now gets distributed across Vgs and part of it also drops across the resistance Rs. Right? So now the voltage which is going to drop, if, if I ask you to find what is the voltage that is dropping across Vgs, you just have to find the error voltage here. This is in the feedback system. Okay? So we know this is I0 and to find the source voltage that is voltage across the resistance Rs, is simply I0 into Rs. So I'll, I'll get GMRS by 1 plus GMRS. And if you subtract into times VI, if you subtract VI from this or VI minus this, I'm going to get VGS and that's going to be VI by 1 plus GMRS. In fact, you can get that from this block diagram itself directly. You are asked to find the output voltage here. So the output current we know is gm by 1 plus gm rs into vi so the voltage here is simply going to be you should just divide it by gm you will get 1 by 1 plus gm rs into vi so here if i choose my gm to be much greater than 1 by rs or gm rs to be much greater than 1 the most of the voltage is going to drop across the resistor okay so most of the voltage is actually going to drop across the resistor that's what this equation is telling us Okay, so let me just go back to this expression. We'll come back to this analysis little after after just going. I mean, after just going through this expression once. So this is the expression for transconductance. This is what we call effective transconductance. After adding a source resistance, the transconductance reduces. Okay, and we are going to call that as the effective transconductance. Now, if you look at this equation, if I make GM much greater than one, GM RS much greater than one, this result is going to be just one by RS. So this after the adding the effect of adding source resistance is that the effective transconductance is now reduced to 1 by Rs. Okay. So which means the output current I0 is going to be Vi by Rs. It's no longer MOS dependent. Okay. The output current is no longer dependent on the MOSFET. So that should also make intuitive sense. Now, for example, let's say I make your GM as infinity. Theoretically, I make sure the GM to, to tend to infinity. If GM tends to infinity, then what will happen is that even for a zero VGS, this is VGS, the drain current is simply GM into VGS. Even for a zero VGS, I can still have a finite current in this device. So which means the entire voltage is going to drop across RS. RS is finite, so I need a finite voltage across it to produce a finite current. But since GM is infinity, I could actually get away with I mean, uh, get away with not dropping any voltage across the MOSFET. <laughs> okay. So the entire voltage will drop across the resistor. So this way, I have linearized the device. I can say that now the current is, is dependent on a resistor instead of a MOSFET. A resistor, we know, is a very linear device. You know, the, both the input and out, I mean, the voltage and current are very linearly related, related to each other for a resistor. Okay. So this way, if I choose GM sufficiently large, then I can get this. Now, if I take this current and push it into a resistor, I mean very similar resistor which is fabricated very similar to the source resistor, I mean the degenerating resistance. So, what I am going to do now is that we chose your GM large enough such that most of the voltage dropped, acro dropped across RS and the current flowing through this was simply VI by RS. All I need to do, I am just showing the small signal part here. I have to just push this current into a resistor, you are going to get a gain of minus RL by RS. I have now a gain which is ratio of two resistors and since both are of similar type, you know, both are resistors, so both of them, the variations in both of them will track each other and the gain will remain constant. There are two advantages, of course, this is one advantage with gain remaining constant. The other main advantage is linear, linearity. By adding the source degeneration, this is actually helping us improve, the, make the device more linear. The current is less and less dependent upon MOSFET and it more depends upon the resistor itself. 
okay and we actually saw a block diagrammatic or an equivalent representation for a common uh, for a uh, source con i mean uh, for a mosfet with source degeneration okay now uh, i'll give another circuit which is very similar to this so for example let's say we have analyzed this circuit this circuit few lectures ago so let's say i apply this input at the source and if i look at the device like this now this is nothing but if you recall it's a common gate configuration if i try to find what is the output current here now again this vi is distributed across vgs and rs the same way this vi is now distributed across rs and vgs the only difference is that now source potential is at higher potential compared to gate so you will have current flowing from source to drain i not direction will be away from the drain whereas if you look at this if vi is positive your i not will flow into the drain here like this the direction will be from drain to source in this case the direction is reversed again if you look at it the small signal resistance seen here into this base i'm assuming again r not is infinity and there is a finite load resistance connected so it will be 1 by gm okay and the voltage drop you can easily show that the voltage drop at the mosfet is going to be 1 by 1 plus gm rs and most of the voltage will drop across the resistor if i assume gm is infinity if gm is infinity theoretically theoretically then this entire vs will appear across rs and you have a current of value vs by rs flowing through this mosfet and this mosfet here just behaves like a current buffer an ideal current buffer it takes the input current at a very low impedance the impedance for the circuit is 1 by gm which is which i'm assuming to be zero right now because gm is infinity then the output current is same as the input current whatever current is flowing in rs the same current will be flowing at the output the drain terminal that times rl will give me the gain and so rl volt output voltage will give me the output voltage so rl by rs is your gain for the circuit now what is the difference between these two circuits even this gives me a gain of course the magnitude of magnitude of the gain is same the gain is negative in this case and the gain is positive in this case the difference comes from the input if you look at this circuit here there is no current drawn from the input your mosfet doesn't draw any current the current drawn from the input is zero whereas here all the output current that is fully fed to the output to the load in fact directly comes from the input okay so the input power is simply vs into i not okay the output power will going to be v not into i not okay so all the current the current is same for both the input and output and it's entirely coming from the input so sometimes your input voltage sources may not be capable of delivering so much of power okay so rather in that cases we can prefer this structure the structure that is shown here okay so in the next lecture i'll start considering r not and we'll talk in more detail about the source degeneration for a mos device what happens when you do a source degeneration what was the motivation is what we discussed in this lecture the two main reasons being gain having a constant near constant gain okay process independent gain and the second thing is linearity if you know most of the voltage should appear across a resistor the current should be just proportional to a resistor instead of a mosfet mosfet's transconductance and we could accomplish that using a resistor okay so now i think it's 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 also interesting to note i'll just draw a parallel between again this lecture as i said it's purely for intuitions and in the next lecture i'll start discussing more seriously when we consider r not and all that we have most of you would have already done an inverting op amp circuit so wherein a resistor is connected between uh, let me call this as rl and this as rs and i'm applying a voltage input vs here now we know the voltage gain this op amp when there is negative feedback it will force this node voltage ideal op amp the forward path gain is infinity the gain of an ideal op amp is infinity so it will force this node voltage to be at ac ground okay what in effect it means is that because the when i try to look at this point the impedance will be zero <laughs> because any voltage change i'm trying to make the op amp feedback will instantly kill it so even if i inject a finite current at this node and try to change the if i inject some small current at this node and try to change this node voltage the op amp will not let it happen so which means the impedance of that node is zero okay for a delta i change there is a change in delta v is zero which means your impedance is zero so therefore the current voltage will entirely drop across the resistor and that will be vs by rs and that current will be flowing through the resistor rl okay we are pushing this current 
current into resistor RL and the voltage drop across RL will be you know will be RL by RS into Vs. So when I look at it, the output terminal, it's going to be minus of RL by RS into Vs. So this is uh, a classic inverting stage op-amp. Even here we are getting a similar structure. The gain is ratio of two resistors. I could achieve that using MOSFETs, using two configurations which I showed. So either a common source configuration with load connected at the drain and source, I mean I have degenerated with the source and input signal is applied here, Vs and V0 is taken at the drain. Or a common gate configuration where I am applying the Vs at the source terminal and taking the output at the drain terminal. So this is your RL and output is taken at this point with respect to ground. All these three circuits, I mean provided this is an ideal op-amp with a forward infinite gain, with a gain of infinity. So if I assume this MOSFET has infinite GM, then these two circuits, the behavior is similar to, especially this circuit, especially this circuit, the behavior is very similar to the op-amp because the input current which is flowing through the load resistance comes from the input directly here. On the other hand, for this circuit, the input current drawn is zero. The power drawn from the input voltage source is zero. Okay. In fact, these two circuits are very similar, you know, very similar to each other. The input resistance of this circuit, in fact, this behaves like a pure current buffer, takes the current from the input and directly feeds it to the load. And you can see this as well, you know, it takes in all the current and uh, because load is in feedback, the current has to flow through the load itself. Okay. So, so this is just drawing some parallels between the two circuits. There is a big difference, of course, you know, this circuit has a feedback. The OPAM based circuit has a negative feedback in it. Whereas this circuit is just a perfect current buffer with which offers zero input resistance and transfers the same current from input to the output. Okay. It behaves like a current buffer, but I'm, I'm just telling you that if you look at the from the input point of view and the output voltage point of view, they both are very similar. Okay. Even here in this circuit, all the current, the input offers zero input impedance and a current of Vs by Rs flows in into the load resistance. Same thing happens here as well in this circuit as well. Okay, so uh, that's it about source degeneration. We discussed the motivation behind it. In the next lecture, we will analyze it in more depth, including R naught, you know, R naught taking R naught into effect and see what happens to that. Okay, yeah. Again, this is all. These are all single stage amplifiers. So we are yet to go to the cascade I mean, multi stage amplifiers.